Ladies, gentlemen, and distinguished guests, the BIFA Freight Service Awards Ceremony is now celebrating its 35th year, all of which, except one, have been held at this wonderful venue. Once again, demand for tickets has been phenomenal, and we welcome over 550 of you here today. To get our proceedings underway, please welcome to the stage Director General of BIFA, Steve Parker. Wow, good afternoon to everyone. Can I ask you, do you like who you're sitting next to? Because if you want to change, now is the time. After this, you've got no chance. This is it. Uh, as Paul said, this is our 35th, 35th Freight Services Award. I was going to ask any of you here 35 years ago. Actually, most of you don't look old enough. Actually, I lie. But there we go, 35 years. More people wanted to attend this year than ever before. And probably the most exciting for me is more applicants' entrance to enter this award. If you are here as a finalist, that is because we've had applications and we've whittled it down to the final few. So if you're here as a finalist, you should be proud to be here. You should be proud that you have made it this far. Not everyone can win, of course, but you are here. And I think that's the important bit. At this point, let me just say a little thank you to our judges. So I do not judge the Freight Service Award, let me tell you. But the judges come from the sponsors of the event and the sponsors of the different categories. I went to the judging ceremony, the judging a day, and I can tell you they worked really hard, they were very diligent in what they had to do, both in terms of preparation and being ready to find the best, uh, best application for these awards. So to the judges, you are here today, let me give you my thanks and my respect, but there's no money, let's be clear. So, what has, what has BIFA been up to? What has, your, what has our industry been doing in 2023? I know, because many of you have told me, 2023 was a tough year. Many called it the year of the reset after the pandemic and all of that that happened there. So for many, it was difficult. But what we see is an industry that is thriving, that is moving forward, that is developing, that is innovating, and that is looking for the next, uh, the next piece of information to make, the, make it work. Here at BIFA, we did some stuff too. Uh, I don't know if you know, but we introduced two new groups in 2023. One was the uh, Sustainable Logistics Group, so we have a Sustainable Logistics Policy Group, and we, we also introduced our Business Leaders Forum. We will continue with both of those in 2024, and if you are a business leader in this room today, then look out for our invite for our meeting, which will be uh, next meeting, which will be in May. We have also improved and enhanced our work across the regions. We now hold meetings in every part of the UK. We have member meetings. Uh, wherever you are, we have a meeting there. Uh, we even go north of Watford. So if you are north of Watford, then you too can come and join us. We have trained 1,001 members of staff. 1,001 in 2023. Let me just talk about training for 2024, because that's important for us too. We are looking at new courses. We're looking at the way in which we deliver training so that it is uh, as accessible to all of you as is possible. And we're even looking at a way, a way in which it gets funded so that the funding of training is easier for you to manage as we go through 2024. Of course, the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024 is dominated by events in the Red Sea. We are very well aware of what's going on there. We're doing all we can to um, put the point of the freight forward or forward as we deal with that issue. I'm sure that will continue in the, in the coming days, and we are there trying to help and trying to make that work as best as we can as that happens. We also, as Sir Peter is here, we also are expecting 
an election in 2024, and we are preparing for that. It is, as they say, our working assumption that we'll have to be ready and we will be ready to support our industry with the various politicians and ministers as that goes. It's also my, my job today to talk about our charity partner. And our charity partner, as you know, is TransAid. Uh, we are very keen that TransAid do very well out of this event. So if you can, you see the envelopes on your table. When the appropriate time comes, please put your hand deep in your pocket and see if we can make it work for them and send them home with a, a, a sensible amount of money uh, that will help them with their charity work that they do uh, mainly across Africa. Caroline will explain that a bit later. And lastly, it's my job to introduce our host today. Uh, Susie Perry has joined us. Susie Perry is famous for motor racing, both uh, motorcycling and, and, of course, uh, the BBC with the Grand Prix. Queen of the pit lane, you're welcome to our B4 Awards. So thank you very much. All it leaves me to say is enjoy. Thank you, Steve. Ladies and gentlemen, as the finalists gather to join us on the stage to collect their certificates, BIFA would like to thank the returning sponsors for supporting the event once again, and we welcome new sponsors. The 2023 award categories this year are sponsored by Albacore Systems, American Airlines Cargo, Boxtop Technologies, Descartes Systems, IAG Cargo, Macbeth Insurance Brokers, and a new sponsor, Menzies LLP, Port Express, Time IT, TT Club, and Virgin Atlantic Cargo. And those sponsoring elements of today's ceremony are ASM UK Limited, CNS, Elite Global Logistics Network, Forward Solutions, Maersk, MCP PLC, Simpex, UK WA, and the Woodland Group. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage FIFA President, Sir Peter Bottomley. Thank you all. The person who very kindly prepared my words also gave to Steve Parker, so you're going to lose out on the four pages there. And what you're going to hear is how I think I am rightly uh, sitting close to Susie, because she and I were born about 18 minutes apart by road, not, not by year. <laughs> we were each born in Shropshire. Uh, I'm reminded that in logistics you have to be able to talk to customers. And when I was 17 and passed my driving test, I said to my elder sister, because uh, we didn't have a car in, in the household, would you like to have half a car? She said, how much? I said, 17 pounds. It was an old Woolsey, 1938 Woolsey. She said, yes. I said to my mother, would you like to have half a car? She said, yes. So I brought the car home, and it took them a week to discover they shared it between them and not with me. <laughs> also with uh, Susie and her things, it reminds me of the time that I went to watch Nigel Mansell in the 1987 Silverstone Grand Prix, the one that was half raining, half not. He won, which was important. Uh, I was there as a guest of Guinness then, now Diageo, who had a very good range of alcohol-free and low-alcohol beers and lagers. <laughs> to avoid the traffic jams, I drove up to Bedfordshire. They took me by helicopter to Silverstone. But after the race, it was still misty, and only twin-engine helicopters could fly. And I wanted to get back to have supper with my wife in Wimbledon. But I don't give up easily, so I wandered around and found the chap in charge of air traffic control, who came up and said, hello, Peter. I said, do we know each other? And how do you know my name? He said, well, I know your name because you're wearing a fluorescent jacket with your name in six-inch letters saying Peter. <laughs> how can I help you? I said, I'm stuck. So he shouted out, mind the microphone, Richard! 
and Branson's beard came out of a tent, and he said, it's very important that Peter Bottomley gets into a helicopter, can we borrow yours? And Richard said, yes. So I flew off to Bedfordshire, drove down to Sapphire in Wimbledon, but Richard couldn't, and he was stuck for three hours in a coach with Ken Clark, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, and Richard thought I'd never done more good to him in my life, so that's my second part. And my last bit was, I think, in 1987, for the European Car of the Year show at Bewley, when I was asked, as, as Rose, Rose Minister in those days, uh, would I open it? I said yes, but I'm flying in from Taiwan at five o'clock in the morning. They said the Daily Express had a big fat director with a helicopter and he'll pick you up at Gatwick and take you down to Bewley. I said, if we're going from Gatwick to Bewley, can you stop at my house in Surrey, or my wife's house where she was an MP? And we did. Uh, the pilot rang up air traffic control and told there was cloud at Southampton, so we'd have to drive there. So the big fat director said, have you got a car? I said, no. So I had to go and see my neighbor, a man called Rodney Timpson, who's a former police officer who's married to Penelope Keith, and said, can I borrow one of his cars? He said, yes. So the big, big fat director and I drove up to all these motoring journalists in the car, not that they'd nominated as car of the year, which was the Peugeot 405. It was an old Fiat, which they decided was the lemon of the century. So they all cheered, and they thought I'd had a, the right approach to not turning up in a, in a Rolls Royce. For this gathering, I'm very grateful to the apprentices. When I wrote at the end of last year to one of them, Brooke Nielsen, saying, was she enjoying working as an apprentice with Bifa at Redfern House? She said it was the best thing in her life. And to her and to Shelby, I'd like you to give them a round of applause because they're the future of freight forwarding. <laughs> the person who prepared Steve's speech reminds us that today is the birthday of Peter Mark Roger, uh, born in 1779, I think, who has his book, very useful for those preparing speeches for weddings. You can find different words to express what you're trying to say. I think it would be better if I'd been referred to the person who did the, uh, the, the, the initials, because with BIFA and moving from Chief to CDS and all the other ones, that would do us more good. And I didn't think last year when we were talking about the recovery that Steve's mentioned, that we wouldn't just have a Suez Canal problem, we'd also have a Panama Canal problem running out of water. Whatever happens, whether it's trying to get the serious side of lorries into Gaza with medicines and food and water, or whether it's trying to recover from the effects of people behaving badly around the world, or it's natural disasters, it's always you and people like you who solve the problems. And one of the curious things is you very seldom see freight forwarders bleating in the press because you just get on with it and you deliver the goods. My task is to stop you from getting your awards. So to the 29 firms who are here with uh, shortlisted people, to the 12 individual finalists, congratulations to you all. And as I move, can you just give a round of applause to all the young people who are coming into the industry and we'll make sure that what you've achieved in your generation will be achieved in generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Peter. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your host and our special guest for the day, Susie Perry. <laughs> Susie will begin by presenting certificates to the finalists in each category. Finalist certificates have been sponsored by MCP, PLC, and recognise those companies and individuals shortlisted in each of the 11 categories of the BIFA Freight Service Awards. We start with the finalists in the four general categories. First, the Project Forwarding Award, sponsored by Macbeth Insurance Brokers. And the finalists are Brunel Shipping and Liner Services, <laughs> Hemisphere Freight Services, Peters and May, and U Cargo.
Next, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Specialist Services Award, Shh. sponsored by Time IT. And the finalists are Cardinal Global Logistics, Metro Shipping, Seafast Logistics, and U Cargo. Now we have the Staff Development Award, sponsored by Albacore Systems. Please welcome DHL Global Forwarding, Cranley Logistics, OIA Global, Uniserve Group and Unsworth UK. The fourth award in this group is the Supply Chain Management Award, sponsored by Boxstop Technologies. The finalists are Atlantic Pacific Global Logistics, Kerry Logistics, Legentia UK, and Noatum Logistics, and Uniserve Group. And now, ladies and gentlemen, shh, I want to hear your applause for 12 very bright individuals as we focused on the shortlists for the two individual categories, beginning with the Apprentice of the Year Award, sponsored by new sponsor Menzies LLP. In the running for this prestigious award are Cameron Slith Smith, Legentia, Jacob Swift, Avaset Clearance, Kieran Elkin, Dasher, Leanne Reed, Neon Freight, Richard Smith, Ziegler UK, and Samuel Barrett, Charles Kendall Freight. The second individual category is the hugely popular Young Freight Forwarder of the Year Award, sponsored by, again by Virgin Atlantic Cargo. Please show your support for Amelia Mulhern of Kuna Nagel, Christopher Cartle, Peterson UK, Emily Howard, Westbound Logistics, Georgia Gibson. Cargo Partner, Michael Shields, DHL Global Forwarding, and Nikki Hall, Edge Worldwide Logistics. Let's give those individuals another huge round of applause, the future stars of our industry. We're halfway there and we return to the business categories, commencing with the brand new 
Sustainable Logistics and the Environment Award, sponsored by American Airlines Cargo. The final finalists are DHL Glowwood Forwarding, Geodis Freight Forwarding UK, Maersk Logistics and Services, Metro Shipping, and the Woodland Group. The second specialist award is the Extra Mile Award, sponsored once again by Descartes Systems. The finalists are Cardinal Global Logistics, Cargo Overseas, Hog Global Logistics, and Cranley Logistics. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we are nearing the end now as we invite the finalists in the three modal categories onto the stage, beginning with the Air Cargo Services Award, sponsored by IAG Cargo. The finalists are Cargo Partner, Doigro, Hog Global Logistics, and Killick Martin and Company. So, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the penultimate award today, which is the European Logistics Award, sponsored by TT Club. Please welcome five finalists. Atlantic Pacific Global Logistics, Baxter Freight, Brunel European, Espace Europe, and Uniserve Group. And so, ladies and gentlemen, shh, 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 last but not least, we come to the Ocean Services Award, sponsored by Port Express. The finalists this year are FS McKenzie, Hemisphere Freight Services, Woodland Group, and World Cargo Logistics.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please now put your hands together to join the BIFA and members of the sponsor judging panel in congratulating the companies and individuals recognised here today.